Yeah. Hi, guys. Hello. Uh, welcome to Studio hey, Sunday. That's my line. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Studio Sunday. What she said. Live <laughs> today. Yeah. How is everybody doing on this uh, beautiful day? It's actually gorgeous here in Houston. And so. we're so happy you joined us. Yeah. So. Hi, Tim. And it's starting to come on, which is yeah. good. I don't know about you, but we've had a couple of wild days around here. Yes, we have. It's been a very frantic, it's just been exactly like a convention, except it's here at the house. Uh, but we've been running and drawing and... We sold out of sketches in about 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. um, we sold lots of never-before-seen art from Ever and Serial. Yes. So that was fun. It was fun to pull that. Um, and you're signing a lot of books. Yes. All the books that have been ordered this weekend, Terry will sign before we ship them out. So that'll be good. Yes. Thank you to everyone who purchased something. And thank you, everyone, for your continued support. It means the world to us. We... Uh, do not take it for granted. That is no. for sure. Oh, no. thank you. Yeah. And it's just been so great to get to meet and and get to know all these wonderful people that we never would have met. I know um, a lot of familiar names, but new people that um, I haven't, you know, I didn't recognize the name, and we were able to chat and everything. And uh, you know, I still am amazed that when we do something like this, the the chat, it's global. You know, I, mean, I see Jeremiah and Audrey and Tony. Oh, this is like that romper room thing. And I see Terry. <laughs> <laughs> well, like Audrey, for instance. Yeah. Aud Audrey lives on the North Pole. Um, <laughs> no, she doesn't. She lives in California. Oh, okay. Close, <laughs> right. And uh, James Bella, he lives in Antarctica. So <laughs> no, he doesn't. That's he lives amazing. in New York. <laughs> oh, well, at I'm least glad it's, to see a lot of people it's show national up. anyway. Yeah. So. Yeah. Patricia's here. Hi. Uh, anyway, it's kind of like a great big meeting, isn't it? It's kind of, you know what it is? It's a massive Zoom chat. No, no. It's a Zoom chat. No, because we would see all those people if it was Zoom. Well, half these people probably don't have their pants on. So. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're lucky I do. Uh, Chris says, I haven't seen Robin in forever. Hi, Chris. I've been right here. Where have you been? I know. She's usually, she's usually just right there at her desk. I'm just yapping at you. Yeah. But that keeps me going, right? So it's all good. Uh, so, well, so we did the sale. And what are we having on sale today? Today we have 20% uh, off on the Art Nouveau portfolios, on Echo, Omnibus, on Motor Girl, Hardcover, Sip. 25 hardcover and five years hardcover until the notice we sent out said two o'clock, but we're going to do three o'clock since we go here until two. Mm -hmm. So free shipping and those 20% uh, off things will be until three o'clock. So if you haven't picked it up, go ahead and go. I want to show off this Art Nouveau portfolio real quick in case you haven't seen one. <laughs> they, These they've guys seen are big. It. They've seen it. Terry Terry loves this. He's very proud of it. I and mean, it is gorgeous. You mean you think they've seen it like you just assume everybody's seen Star Wars and so this is just as big yeah, as Star Wars? I think you probably would take that to your head if you could. Okay, guys. Listen, if you've seen this before and you've seen me brag about it before, that means it's as big as Star Wars. It means <laughs> everybody's already seen it. <laughs> oh, gosh. So if you yeah. haven't seen it, check it out online. It was fun to do. Yeah, it was. It was fun to do. And it was kind of a different art style for you. So it was um, like my last big. You know, MTK says it was bigger than Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because Star Wars is this big and mine is that big. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was like my last big hurrah for Art Nouveau. I don't know if I'll draw more of that. But um, I sure loved Art Nouveau growing up. And it was nice to be able to get my chance to contribute to that. So. Yeah, uh, that person says they have one of them and it's gorgeous. So, and a of, uh, honey, a lot of people bought them. A lot of people like it. More than you're two. a good boy. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh gosh. Well, he loves that, guys. <laughs> so, you know. it took anyway, a long time. well, it did take a long time. You put your heart and soul into it, and mm -hmm. every page is every uh, print is signed and mm -hmm. numbered. So, and we try to get it to you in one piece. So it's all good. 
That's the first time we ever had to go to the printer and lay them all out by the hundreds and do the signing thing. And it, I, it was exactly like what uh, Jeff Scott Campbell does all the time on his special covers. You see pictures of uh, Campbell and he's got everything laid out by the thousands and he just goes through and signs. And that was my one uh, Campbell experience, go signing all those prints. The printer did not know what to think of it. I know. <laughs> It was fun. Yeah. A good thing, uh, fortunately, our printer lives nearby. He's in the next town over, just down the highway about 300 miles. Yeah. So that's how it works here. So it's nice. That's where we print the individual issues and like that special project. Yeah. Typically, we print in Canada or China. For the big books, for the collections. Yeah. 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 Um. <laughs> so we had a lot of people, happy people who purchased sketches and art, but we also had a lot of sad people who didn't get it. Yes. They couldn't get in. They had problems uh, getting onto the sketch site or couldn't even get onto the site. Um, so we're sorry about that. We had our guys on board waiting, looking for any problems. And they said everything on our end was, you know, open, wide open and ready to go. Um, so I am strongly suggesting to Mr. Moore here that when we do our next sketch sale or next art sale in October, that he have a hundred sketches. That way you'll have a better opportunity to get one. Don't you think that's a great idea? I think it's a really great idea. Um, which I'm just Here, let me to, get you started. I'm going to have to hire somebody to draw them for me. <laughs> Look, you have until October. So here's what I got, want you guys to do. Every time you email Terry or see him on Instagram or whatever, I want you to send before you ask your question or whatever, I want you to say, are you drawing sketches? How many sketches do you have? <laughs> That'll drive me nuts. Yeah. By the way, our next um, Terry Moore Live weekend will be October 1st, 2nd, and 3rd. Mm -hmm. So put that on your calendar now. There will be 100 sketches up there. <laughs> they may be doodles, you know, like little smiley faces, but uh, I'll, I'll do my best. So that's a wonderful goal. I think I can do it. It'd be interesting to see if I can do that. You, know. you have six months to do it. I, I Well, I did 40 in one month, right? So. And let me just say that in January, I said, time to start, start the sketches for Terry Moore Live in April. And he did maybe one or two in three months. <laughs> I was kind of like, yeah, I'll get around to that. <laughs> I'm waiting for them. I'm waiting for the inspiration. Yeah. yeah. Well, try to, try to find it a little sooner this time, would you? <laughs> McKaylee says, if I have to draw 100 sketches, I'll have to draw like a feather mucker. <laughs> a feather mocker. Oh. Well, yes, yeah, we, we say that a lot around here. Actually. If you just, we don't need to go into our personal issues. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that what the internet is for? <laughs> but if you would just start drawing tomorrow <coughs> one sketch and then maybe another sketch in three or four days, mm -hmm. by the time October rolls around, you'll have 100. Have you ever thought about that? I thought about that, but that sounds too down to earth and practical. <laughs> it's what I would do. <laughs> it's kind of like, you know, uh, write a hit song tomorrow. You know, just sit down and write a hit song. Some people can do that, I guess. Um, but yeah, I have to draw every day. Why not start with a sketch? Exactly. Right? Exactly. And see what happens. The problem is you get so into them that you spend more time. There you go. That's the deal. I get into them, especially this last time. And um, like I haven't started the next issue of Serial yet because I was just totally devoted to these sketches. and um, I spent more time than I usually do. See, all these people are agreeing with me. They are? Yes. Just get up there and get busy. Oh, man, they are agreeing with you. <laughs> I like this. Start with. A sketch. No, what I like is Big Ugly Dude says um, each sketch gets a Dr. Pepper. Uh, that's just practically true I, anyway. It is. I can be bought. I can be bribed. I'm easily bribed with a good uh, Dr. Yes, Pepper or something. Yes. So. Oh, gosh. I know. I, you have to pick your vices carefully. Pick one that everybody loves. Oh, I'm so glad he's hooked on Dr. Pepper. <laughs> oh, I'm glad he loves crack. Oh, I'm so glad he loves crack. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah. Anyway, so we drew, we, we saw the sketches that we had. We did. And Robin said, draw some more. And I did manage to get two more drawn uh, since Friday because, you know, we don't have anything else going on. 
<laughs> oh, so, it's just a laugh a minute here. <laughs> can I show one? Sure. Okay. Here's actually, I started this one on Instagram yesterday, and I got about halfway through it, and I said, "Okay, I'll, I'll finish it after this." After this. So here's one I did of Francine, and when I was drawing it, I was talking all about, you know, the eyes and the mouth and how important it is to, you know, get the mouth a certain just right because it can send so many signals and you don't want to send the wrong signals or so the getting the facial expressions and all the little nuances is just right. And I also told the Instagram people, I'll tell you too, this uh, opal necklace is very is always in Strangers in Paradise. And it started off as Kachu's. And then there was a scene in a Strangers in Paradise issue where Kachu and Francine have their very first passionate uh, moment. Uh, and they have it behind doors. We don't see it. But when they come out back out of the door, um, Kachu, uh, Francine is wearing the necklace. So Francine took it in that moment and wore it from the rest of the series. And just as a little aside, uh, the first gift Terry ever gave me when we were dating was an opal necklace that looked just like that. It's, yeah, Aww. I love you, kid. <laughs> so that's why it's in the story. It's just it, the for us, it means I love you, you know. So that sketch is going to be available later today when Robin decides she's good and ready. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> oh you want to put gosh! It oh. I've done my part. These these two sketches are going up at two o'clock. They'll it'll go live at two o'clock. I've already set it up. So at two o'clock, these two will be available on the site. Please yeah, don't be upset if you don't get it. Okay, okay. So this sketch <laughs> is going to be great. This is the Mona Lisa I'm going to draw tomorrow. <laughs> uh. It's an IOU sketch. Okay, now turn it around. Drawings on the other side. It's Casey uh, uh, wave jumping uh, just outside Kachi's house. I think Hawaii. the wave won. The wave won on this one. <laughs> <laughs> but you know Casey, she doesn't care. It's all fun. So this one will be up for sale at the two o'clock as well. Yeah, they'll both go live at two. So we hope somebody gets them that loves them. Okay, so what else is going on? Uh, let me put on my publisher hat. In other news, um, the 2021 soft cover sketchbook, it's 106 pages, will be out in June at your local comic shop, Comixology, and on our website. But we will be printing a hardcover, uh, and it's going to have a signed book plate. It is not going to be signed a number because we're going to do these pre-orders, and we're going to print to order. We're not going to order 750 books and you have to race to get them. We want everybody to get one that wants one. So they're going to be, um, they're going to be a hardcover and they're going to have a book plate signed in it, but they will not be numbered. And the soft cover is $15.99 and the hardcover will be $25.99. And they will go up for pre-orders on April 19th, which is next Monday, a week from tomorrow. And the pre-orders will close on April 26th, the following Monday, a week later. So you have a week in there to get it because then it has to go to the printer. Okay. Uh, but like I said, we're going to be printing to orders. So if you miss it out, miss out in that week, you miss out. They typically overprint a few mm -hmm. uh, just because they can't stop the machine exactly mm -hmm. uh, on time at the exact number usually. And um, so we may get a few extras like we do sometimes, but we can't certainly can't promise that. So if you want the hardcover sketchbook 2021 edition with the signed book plate in it, you have to pre-order starting a week from Monday. So that's my. Um, so uh, Devil's Fan is saying, I'm confused. Didn't the How to Draw already come out? We're talking about a new sketchbook. A new sketchbook. Typically, when we go to a convention, we have a little sketchbook. Yeah. They're right um, there on the I right. See. You know you know where they are on my shelf because I've shown you my shelves. It looks like this. Yeah. This is a convention sketchbook. Yeah. And we sell it at the table or the booth. And, um, you know, it's kind of a, a memento for the show. But because we haven't done any shows in two years, mm -hmm. we thought it might be a good idea to go ahead and put out a regular bound sketchbook. So that's what we're doing because there won't be any shows this year. 
So, uh, or that we're attending. So I think there are going to be some near the end of the year and uh, we'll see, but it'll be too late by them to put a book out. So mm -hmm. uh, anyway, so that's why we're doing a new sketchbook. It's not how to draw. It's an actual sketchbook, sketchbook with sketches. And if you're wondering what's going to be in it. Like that. For one thing, you know, all these 40 sketches that I just did are going to be in there. Uh, but I did a lot of other sketches during the COVID year as well, um, I, you know, because I was just home drawing. So I did a lot of drawing. Um, I keep looking over here in the corner where I am, but I need to look right there where you are. Why are so, you looking over there? There's nothing over there. I don't know. There. There's nothing there but me, and I'm not even looking at me. I'm looking <laughs> off in the distance. I've got to get my eye coordination right. Uh, so anyway, uh, sketchbook. Yeah, I'm looking so, forward to that. And now I know it's going to be easy to put it together. I've got all, tons of material. It's 106 pages. Mm -hmm. It'll be on our site April 19th. Don't miss out. Okay. Serial number three will be in stores Wednesday. Um, it'll be in stores and on our website and on Comixology. So Wednesday, don't miss that. Zoe definitely has her hands full this time around. I haven't even thought about serial number three for the last couple of days, but... Um, it's, I really like this issue and it covers a lot of ground. Zoe is fun. We get a scary moment with the killer. Um, I was explaining that in, <laughs> earlier, but you know, yeah, yeah. This is some stuff. Some stuff happens. Yeah. So this is kind of a fast and furious series. Yeah. You know? How long is this series going to go? 10 issues. Mm. If, um, we base our publishing schedule on the numbers that sell. This is probably more information than you want to know. So if and we have found that 10 issues seems to be the sweet spot for keeping the individual issue numbers up. But uh, serial has been kind of an, a phenomenon and the numbers continue to grow. And so if the numbers stay up, we may go to 15 on serial. I would love that. I would love that. I have so much story to tell. Um, we'll make a decision about issue six or seven. Okay. Okay. Well, fingers crossed. We the meaning series me. keeps going strong. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, the smart, the down to earth person will make the decision if it's a wise idea to go forward. But, um, I love doing uh, the story and I could just go forever on it. Um, which is how it is when you're writing something you love, your imagination just won't stop. Um, and by the way, I mentioned this earlier this weekend, but uh, Serial and Zoe at that moment in Serial, this happens before Rachel Rising in the timeline. So she hasn't gone to Manson yet and hung out with Rachel and all that. Um, so it's I, I like to keep all that in. She's kind of right. autonomous at this point. Yeah, she's autonomous at this point. Okay. So. Okay, so Tony asked if, the series goes to 15, mm -hmm. will we extend the subscriptions that were 10 issues? We'll send out a notice, and if you want to subscribe for the last five, we'll make sure that happens for you. So uh, we won't yeah. let you miss those last five issues. Yeah, we couldn't leave them out stranded out on a raft in the ocean. No, no we won't do that. <laughs> no. So, um, yes, number three does come out. Oh, he says it came out this week. It so came out your, this week? Your store... <laughs> Jump the gun a little bit. But yeah, it comes out Wednesday. Well, may, did you already send out the subscriptions? I did. Maybe that's what that is. That's We're hearing true. from subscribers. Could be. Yeah, subscribers, subscribers have already read it. I still didn't say it right. And if you don't know, when Terry does a series, before the series starts, we always do a subscription. Mm -hmm. And the, as soon as the series, series starts, we stop because it is typically 10 issues and we don't want to have to go back and do nine issues. Somebody wants four issues. Somebody wants seven. So once the series starts, all subscriptions, subscriptions stop. So uh, those of you that have a subscription, yes, we'll give, we'll send out a notice if you want to subscribe to them to the last issues. Um, Mike Kelly points out something really good, which is 15 issues equals three paperback collections. And of course, one big omnibus at the end. So, it makes for a nice package, but boy, yeah, I could sure feel that. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of uh, weaponry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and William Fink says his shop gets it on Monday. So yeah. Monday. What happened to Wednesday? Comic Wednesday. Well, it comes out on Wednesday. They get it on Monday. Oh, and they put it in his pool box and he can go get it early. Maybe. 
Yeah. I don't really know how all that works. Okay. So. Well, let, let's don't dig. It's his private business. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, hey, I have a trivia question for you guys. I, I actually wrote down several, and I was going to see, test your knowledge, your uh, Strangers in Paradise knowledge. If you've read Strangers in Paradise, you're going to ace this test. Um, can you tell me Francine's brother's name? I didn't know Francine had a brother. Uh-huh. She has a brother. What's his name? <laughs> think, think. Uh, remember that he actually uh, dated Molly of Molly and Pooh in um, high school? I, I, I guess I've blocked that. That was way back <laughs> Look, in the nothing. 50. <laughs> Nobody has it. They're all looking it up. Oh, yes. Nicholas, Ben. Yes, Benjamin. Nicholas, Nicholas got it. Ben, Benjamin. Yeah. Uh, you got to see him in the high school uh, series a lot. Okay. Um, it's not Bob. <laughs> that, uh, yeah, Tom. <laughs> okay. Here's a big one. Uh, who was Francine's boyfriend before Freddie? Right before Freddie, she had a boyfriend. She was, and they were hot together. They were very passionate. They went wild. And that's why, and he dumped her. They and were that, wild? They were wild. They, she did everything. And he dumped her. So that's why she was very chaste with Freddie. And it drove Freddie crazy. Oh. Uh, Patricia got it. Yeah. Chuck. <laughs> so Freddie secretly hates Chuck. <laughs> and they're friends. They're yeah, yeah, they're friends, but yeah, oh, but not really. Drove Chuck, drove Freddie crazy. Okay, you did good on that one, guys. Um, so speaking of that, didn't Freddie buy the big Francine? No, he wanted to pay two hundred dollars for the massive portrait of Francine, her nude, at the gallery showing for Q. Oh, okay. You know who did buy it? If you go back and look at the issue where they're having the gallery opening and you see Freddie fighting with the crew, I'll give you $200, I can buy this all day long. Um, <laughs> the, in that issue, you see two women looking at it. And you know who they are? They are. Does anybody know who those two women you know are? Oh, look, are. William Fink's on it. He's yes. all over it. Man, William, you are good. And Patricia knows. Yeah. Aunt that's Johnny. that's uh, Aunt Johnny and Carol from Rachel Rising. And later on, when Rachel Rising comes out and you go into Aunt Johnny's study in her home, Portrait of Francine is on the wall. Big, huge, massive, glorious painting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get Terry to do like some black and white, big, like, like that. Bigger than like 24 by 48 or 36 by 48. Bigger big. Than my, bigger than my drawing table. Uh, just black and white type. Um, yeah. Portrait. Studies. Like, studies of women. Yeah. Uh, so we'll see how that works out. You know, do what I do, but do it on a big scale. You know, one big painting. Um, you know, like art. <laughs> <laughs> like real art? Like art. <laughs> Uh, I really want to do that now, that, that she put that idea in my yeah. head. Tom asked, what is the biggest piece of SIP art you ever drew? <sighs> I don't think you've ever done anything. I've never done anything oversized on SIP. Mm -mm. One time, a, a long time ago, I taped together a lot of uh, big sheets of paper, cheap paper, and I covered the wall uh, with it, and I drew one big drawing on that wall. Um, Back on Newberry, I think we have a photo of it. But you have done uh, the fainting woman. That was big. That yes, I. But did. that wasn't Strangers of Paradise. That was no. That was that uh, was in way before you started doing. I did a comics. huge pastel of Lillian Gish and fainted on the floor from one of her movies. It was a scene from a movie, and she had a letter in her hand. She read a letter and she fainted. I guess it was a letter about her husband in World War One. Something a bad letter. So yeah. And that was pretty big, but you don't usually work on, you on that scale. No, I don't. And and you can get if you get used to working on one scale and you go to a big scale, it can be tricky because your proportions, right? So um I that's where you you get the information about how did those old masters do it? And they 
actually use mirror projections and light and prisms to project. Um, so I think sometimes I just have to make a good drawing at the scale I'm good at, and then I'll project it on the big thing and then make it all about the line work. Yeah. Did you see the flare I put in there? I did. That's going to be gorgeous. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I don't know where the flare came from. So, um, Nicholas asks, seeing Santa Kachu and those old wizard gift tags, is there any chance you'd ever do holiday cards? We actually did a couple of holiday cards that we sent to industry people. And I think six subscribers actually got them mm -hmm. um, years ago, like in the early 2000s, uh, but probably not now. Have you seen uh, the old uh, colored illustrations of Francine and Kachu at Christmas time with, you know, different poses? Those were probably used for the uh, postcards, you know, or a calendar. Um, are you thinking of any new merchandise anytime soon? I'm not. In fact, uh, our our uh, our warehouse is bare of merchandise because we just can't. I can't find anything I'm in love with. Uh, the question, first question that comes to everybody's mind is, why don't we do posters? Well, because they never get there in one piece. They're bent. They're torn. They don't arrive. The, the tomb, tomb is empty is. when they get it. <laughs> oh, Lord. It's just, oh, we have, tried. we have tried. You can't take them to conventions because they get beat up. Mm. Uh, I mean, it's tough. Posters are tough. People that can can handle posters, I, I am jealous of them. I just can't do it. You know, uh, Tom and Patty, Pat, Patricia, are saying that the Nikki perfume ad is the biggest because it's a two page spread. Oh yeah. But I also, there's also a two page spread of Darcy's pool. Uh, you remember that one uh, that I'm so proud of with the square framing, but there's also um, the last, the last issue number 90 had three covers. And what I did was I took 11 by 17s and taped them together. So it's three 11 by 17s as one trifold and it's one illustration. Tape is, a, is one of your main oh, tools, isn't it? I, do. I use a lot of tape. <laughs> tape and glue and crayons. <laughs> Just like when you're getting ready to go to first grade. Sticks I find in the yard. <laughs> so I yeah, would, that, uh, the trifle. If you put all the issues, lay them out flat so you can see the front and the back cover, lay them all out, and they make a, a long mm -hmm. image. So. I have that right here behind us, but I'd have to go dig it out. You may not want to. Me. See me do that. You can put that up at some point. Just a photo of holding up this. It looks like I'm holding up a big fish. <laughs> this big trifold. Um, t-shirts. I we have been approached about doing a t-shirt for cereal, but I wasn't sure that people would want to have a ten-year-old girl on their chest. I didn't know how people felt about that, so uh, we didn't do one. But uh, you know, maybe there's an opportunity down the way if other characters get involved that maybe we can do a, a group scene or something like that. Maybe it's not Zoe. Maybe uh, it's an emblem, you know, like things have emblems, you know, uh, a lot of people want a David bus to go with Prince and Kachu. Yeah, we are missing that. Aren't we? Every time I did uh, merchandise that had the three of them, you know, David got left behind. David got left behind every time. Like we did lapel pins the Kachu sold out fast. The Francines eventually sold out. We ended up only selling like two Davids. <laughs> <laughs> no, except that David just, everybody loves Francine and Kachu. Mm -hmm. I love David. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people love him. But yeah, they just don't want his pin. <laughs> they don't want his pin on their shirt. No. So, uh, an art, a t shirt of an art nouveau Francine and Kachu would be cool. Yeah, Patricia. We need a statue. A Zoe bust would be interesting too. We need a pen of a t-shirt of a statue. So here's what I would like to do, but I don't know because we haven't done any statues in so long, but wouldn't it be great if you did a statue with a lot of characters from the Terry verse in it and it could be big, you know, it would be, you know, oh and have God. like kind of like the source book, but not that many people, you know, it this would be like a major sideshow piece or something. Yeah. And I'm not sure that sideshow <laughs> would want to take that on. So oh it's, it's, uh, it's tricky. Merchandise is tricky. 
but I'll, I'll keep looking and, and get you your opinion on it. So that's the most expensive idea you've ever come up with. <laughs> I can come up with it. Let me tell you. <clears throat> wow. So. Maybe what I'll do is I'll simply um, sculpt a figure out of clay and sell this one, that one clay sculpture. And it's just a one-off. It's just a one-off and it costs a million dollars. That's practical. That's the most expensive idea I ever came up with. Oh, yeah. A Sam and Mike statue would be stunning. Yes, it would. Yeah, that would be cool. I would love to have that, too. You know, now with 3D imaging and the 3D printers, you know, Ooh. something like that, we might be able to finagle. See, we need to talk these things out. We we have never talked about figures or statues. Not, We're actually having not a since conversation. Not Moore did yeah. the bathtub and the bus. We haven't talked. So it's been 20 years since we talked about figures. Even behind closed doors, we don't talk about figures. So... <laughs> Uh, we should all get, okay, everybody that's here is on the board of directors <laughs> for Abstract Studio. We should, this is a board of directors meeting. We should all, or we should all get together for a um, corporate meeting in Hawaii. And I I'll, like to have corporate meetings in Hawaii. I yeah. think that's a good idea. So all 70 of us that are on here are now on the board of directors for Abstract Studio. And we will plan a convention where we're all in Hawaii and we make these big decisions on the lanai. What do you guys think about, you know, a Strangers in Paradise Learjet? Yeah! Let's have another mind time and think about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm full of bad ideas. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> Gosh. Invest everything in David Pins. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so oh. says the uh, CEO of Abstract Studio. Yeah. So, yeah. Are we going to pay for everybody's plane ticket? Uh, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I will say that I am cashing in all of our air miles, air miles, all of our everything points, and we're going to Hawaii this year. Really? We are. You need to do some serious research over there. You know, uh, I could put it in the story and we could write it off. That's right. Yeah. Just like Ferrari. Somebody needs to drive a Ferrari in that story. <laughs> <laughs> I think that would be a, that would be a stretch. You want to know a true story? Terracon 2022 in Hawaii. I like it. Yeah. We could have it on the beach. Yes. I like it. Yeah. We'll all stay right there on uh, Waikiki and take over. And Thank you for joining us, Michele. Yeah. Bye, guys. Um, so I have another question. I'm going to have my trivia oh, questions here. Okay. Um, can, does anybody out there know David's real name? We've been talking about him like crazy. David, uh, did you ever wonder why a Japanese-American uh, has a Chinese name? There's a story about that. Pat says the Yusaka. first answer. That's correct. Yusaka Takahashi. And why does Yusaka have a Chinese name? And there's a three issue story arc about it. And it changed, changed David's whole life. So, yeah. It's David, it's David's story. David's story. There's a trade paperback called David's Story. And you can find and it's out. It's around issue, what is it? Six, it's around 60 somewhere. Okay. Yeah, I, we did David's Story right after uh, Francine ran off to get married. And so it was. The SIP story kind of like, oh, and and Joe was, says he was named after the boy he killed. Yes, that's right. Oh, yeah. spoilers. I guess I shouldn't be saying that. Oh, boy. Sorry. <laughs> you said that on, to the world. Oh, so sorry. Oh, well, never mind. Don't even bother reading the story. <laughs> no, it's a good story. It's a good story. Um, okay. Can you name a Parker girl besides Kachu? If I say Parker girl, you think Kachu. Tammy's not really a Parker girl. She was enforcer. But there were, Kachu had a lot does of contemporaries. She, does Tammy have a, a Lily tattoo? Yes, she does. Well, Everybody, then she's a Parker girl. Well, I guess that's right. Yeah. Tammy's tattoo is down on her ankle. You've seen it. It's on her left ankle. She, they all know Cherry Hammer and Veronica. Cherry Hammer is not a Parker girl. She, she works for Tammy. So she never worked for Darcy. Veronica is a Parker girl. Stephanie is a Parker girl. Stephanie, you need you need to know her. She's a big, big deal. <laughs> Emma 
What's a Parker girl? Casey's not a Parker girl. <laughs> uh, Bambi, not a, yeah, Bambi's Parker girl because it was the, the twin enforcers. Working. Hey, during this sale, I put out the pay. One of the pages that was up for sale was when Bambi was oh. killed. It's yeah. the first time that page has been out, and somebody snapped it up. That's so. a that's a grisly page. Yeah. Tambi and Bambi had a big fight. Uh, somebody had to win. No, one person was not going to walk away. So, okay, I wrote down the Parker girls I could think of. <laughs> Just off the top of my head. There's Emma, the first one we meet. Uh, Veronica, Stephanie. Um, remember the woman who comes back after Kachu? Uh, Vicky, and her uh, real name is Lindsay Noel. That's the one that Cherry Hammer and Becky the Gun Girl took out. One of Terry's, one of my favorite pages that Terry has done, and I'm now I'm sad we sold it. And as it was, I was handing it over to somebody. I thought, oh, I should have kept that page. Is the one where uh, I think uh, Cherry and, and Becky are lined up, are are in a hotel room with her gun back away from the window, and she's looking at uh, uh, Lindsay Noel. Um, in three or four buildings down. Yeah, like a thousand meters away. <laughs> And that she's ready to shoot her. And she, Lindsay is standing at the window. Becky takes her shot. And, and you know, when you shoot somebody from that far away, whatever it, the bullet hits, it's a 50 round, 50 millimeter round. It'll blow that off the body. So she shoots her hand first and her hand blows off. And Lindsay's going, what? And back at the ho hotel room, uh, Cherry tells Becky. Don't play with your food. <laughs> <laughs> yes, big ugly dude got that. <laughs> I love that page. So then, I just thought that so line then Becky was takes the second shot like that. It was really a gross page, but it was funny. We, I, Robin and I just thought it was really cool. <laughs> I did. I didn't at first because it was so gory, but then I just thought that is an amazing line. So, yeah. and I am not a gun advocate, so. Yeah. You know, but I just thought that was perfection. So anyway, uh, Patricia says, are there any other pages from SIP that you just couldn't let go? I think I've, well, we saved the last issue, the whole last issue. And the first issue. No. Well, we that's the sold first. the first issue. No, 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 no. Don't say we. we. Do we. not say we. <laughs> it's before I came on the scene. And I said, well, where's issue number one? Well, it's sold. Let's sell those pages. And from then on, we've always kept issue number one and the final issue of the series. So we have all those. I really regret selling every page from the first issue. And I sold them back in the beginning to get, um, they were advertising. And I sold them for, you know, like 25 cents a piece, something, <laughs> something dumb. But anyway, yeah. Mm -hmm. So you wish you had some. I wish back. I had those better. Have I kept any since then? I wish I kept the Darcy pool. Um, but that's gone. Um. And I and and like whenever uh, when we I started pulling pieces forever, I said, "Do you want to pull some out of here? Think now." And he did. So he did pull some. Yeah. You know, one page I sold and I regretted it, and it came back to me. Uh, the last time I went to uh, Emerald City Comic Con, it was a cover. It was a cover, and it was the cover to Stranger to Paradise number two in the miniseries. Um, and it was painted. No, number three, where Francine is standing in front of the heart and the heart is, has a gash in it and Francine has the knife. Um, that was a watercolor painting that I did. Um, so I got that. Somebody came up to me at that show and said, I have this and I really don't have room for it. I never did frame it or put it up. And would you like it back? I think it maybe it should come back to you. And he just gave it back to me. And I and said, you were so happy. Would, I, would you like me to pay you whatever you paid for? And he said, no, it's a gift to you. So that was gifted back to me. I thought that was so nice. As you can tell, it, you know, it made no impression on me. I never remembered. But yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that was big. That was big. I'm glad I had it back. So do you want another trivia question? Sure. Can you tell me the name of Kachu and Francine's daughters? Oh, that's easy. No, it's not. Not everybody's read the back half of the series. Hmm. Is it Gertie and Sniffle? It's Robin and Terry, isn't it? 
<laughs> yes. <laughs> it's muffins and Mimsy. It is. Muffins it's and Mimsy. And Ashley. That's correct. Pat knows all these. So, and we uh, think knows them all. So, guys, do you have any questions that you would like to ask that are just burning? If you want to stump, stump the band, ask me a trivia question you think I don't remember because my mind is going fast. Um, but I'll give you a hard one. In Stranger in Paradise, who was Mr. King? That's a hard one. That's the kind you at, we ask for a giveaway. <laughs> Somebody says they can be for the kids' names. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are funny. Yeah, you are funny. That's why I like you guys. I like hanging out with you guys. <laughs> uh, any movements on the film? Shut up, Nicholas. <laughs> We're working on it, guys. We are working on it. They, you know the story. You have to talk 100 people into it. Yeah. We've talked about 40 into it. Yeah. We need <laughs> another 60. Uh, have you thought ahead to what will come after cereal? Hmm. It's too early. You're, I usually, too I, yeah, I, I don't do that. I, I just uh, throw myself into the one and I have to finish it. And then I... Uh, dump my cash, you know, reboot, and then I think of the next one. But while I'm working on a series, I may get an idea, you know, like, oh, you know what, be cool, like somebody going backwards in time, whatever. And I'll just make a note of it, but I won't spend a lot of time working on it because I want to stay with this crazy serial killer woman. And So Joe asks, is there any character out there that you would like to write or draw that you haven't yet? We all know Supergirl. Yeah. But I think that's, um, you missed the window on that. Yeah, that's long gone. Um, but did you see the Bat, Batgirl, Supergirl drawing that I did at the sketches in this for this weekend where, um, no, it was Power Girl and Batgirl. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see, besides Supergirl. You know, guys, he puts stuff up on the internet. He'll tweet something and I'll say, that's just not true. And he'll have to take it down and then he'll have to put something else up. It was, he just makes stuff up or thinks it, and then it's totally wrong. And I have to say, go take that down. It was true in my dimension. <laughs> yeah. And the minute he comes back into reality, he realizes. Okay. So you're going to understand this. You're, you're all comic people. You will understand this. I live in the dimension where uh, Peter and Gwen Stacy uh, lived and got married and had a wonderful life. Robin lives in the dimension where Gwen fell off a, a bridge and he ended up marrying Mary Jane. So that's the difference. I live in La La Land. <laughs> <laughs> Robin lives on planet Earth. So. Oh, gosh. So Elvin did see that one. So, okay. Uh, nobody has answered who Mr. King was in Strangers in Paradise, have you? I don't see the answer anywhere. No. No. Come on, Patricia. You know this. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, he wasn't the mobster. No. He was the mobster. No. Who was the mobster was Sal. Sal Tuccini. Sal, that's right. Tuccini. Uh, and I named him Tuccini, uh, kind of a little bit of a nod to my pal, um, Billy Tucci. Hey, you know what? I'll tell you a Billy Tucci story. He really did buy a motorcycle uh, and write it off by putting it in the comic issue that he was working on. <laughs> I guess you could do that back in then. In the 90s. Maybe. Back in the 90s, yeah. you could do that. He bought a ninja bike. He's a motorcycle guy. And uh, he, he had a character that used the same exact bike. So I was so jealous. <laughs> What a great idea. So go get that car. Mr. King, Mr. King. Okay. If you don't get it in the next two minutes, I'll tell you who Mr. King was. I won't leave you hanging. He wasn't the neighbor. Uh, House of M did an arc years ago with Gwen and Peter married and kids. And Spider-Man is a TV star. James, it's not the neighbor. No, not the neighbor. Was he the investigator following Kachu? No. No. Who was that? Um, I think you're thinking of the little guy with glasses that was trying to uncover the big six. The big mustache. Oh, that was Digman. Oh, there was... The younger guy. Detective Walsh? Yeah. Detective Walsh had the mustache, the, the cop mustache. And then the big guy in the very beginning was Digman that Tamby beat up. 
Later on in no, the story. No, I think Aunt Tammy killed him. Yeah. I don't think he was beat up. She just hit him and he died. I don't, <laughs> I don't know why. Gosh. <laughs> okay, tell him who it is. Okay. Mr. King was Kachu's alias when she was going through the worst time in her life uh, later on in the series. Darcy pulled her back in and made her run the business again. And Kachu was going through her just living on drugs and Francine was not in her life. And she was uh, using Darcy's money to run the stock market and do these deals. And every time somebody negotiated for this invisible boss, the boss was Mr. King. And then her uh, rep would call her on the phone and she was laying in a bathtub all coked out or something and making these business decisions. And he, the rep would get back to the board of directors and say, Mr. King says we need to do this and this and this. So that was that time. And that's when Tamby saved her life. She pulled her up, slapped her around, said, come on, we're coming. We're going to the meeting with Sal and the guys, and you're going to, we're going to have a, a final meeting with these guys and you're going to play your final card. And when she did that, as a reward, Tamby had brought Francine and had her in the limo. And it was the first time she'd seen her in like a year or two. And it was, it was big. It was big. It was big. Boy, that's a lot of lot of stuff going on there. It's funny how it's just all right in my head like it happened yesterday. You know? Yeah. I remember the details and what they were wearing and, you know, all that. And how Kachu pulled her gun out of the open briefcase and had her gun and just held it on Sal until he agreed, you know. That was her power play. <laughs> okay, don't tell this one. We'll use this one. Um, okay. For our giveaway. I have a giveaway that I it's promised. It's just a blank book, and Terry's. I'm going to give you a piece of paper. <laughs> Not really. This is a blank cover. on a Strangers in Paradise cover gallery book. And this is a dummy book from the printer. They make these dummy books before they do the big run so they don't waste the big machine, you know. They make a blank book for you to check it out and see, was well, this exactly what you want? From is your... that the paper you wanted to use? Is this the cover paper you want? Yes. Yeah, is the, is the binding correct, all that? Mm -hmm. So I saved this little one um, thinking, gosh, that'd be a great sketchbook. And to get you started right after the frontis page here, I did the first sketch for you in your book. So on the very front page is a pencil sketch that I just did last night of Zoe. Um, and that'll be your first sketch in your new sketchbook. And then every other page is blank. So either you can fill it with sketches and memories, or you can take it to shows for the next five years and get other artists to fill it out. Maybe have, make, maybe make it a theme book. Everybody has to draw Zoe or something. So guys, this is going to be for us people only. I'm so sorry. The last time we did this, we gave some stuff away. Some of it went to Europe and they never got it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we had to send it again. They got it damaged. So we're just doing US on this giveaway. So please bear with us on that. It's just. It cost us $300 <laughs> to give somebody something. In, it did. In Europe. Yeah, it did not go well. I've decided that when we try to send something uh, out of the United States, that they put it on a biplane with an old guy and they just hope he makes it across the ocean. Sometimes it would be cheaper for me to get on the plane and hand deliver it. It would. Yeah. Especially if it's in Rome or yeah. Paris. You know, yeah. Yeah. Um, so. A blank sketch, well, a one-of-a-kind sketchbook. I want to give it to you as a thank you. So we'll do that in about five minutes. We've got about 10 minutes left. Okay. So we'll do it right at the end. Should I just hold it here and no, taunt, give it taunt to me. you? <laughs> I have a mean You're street. You're taunting me. I have a mean street. <laughs> okay. What other questions do you uh, have, folks? Tom's already tried the answer. 28. Hey. No, it's not 28. <laughs> <laughs> So was uh, San Diego Comic-Con your first professional appearance? Uh, no. First professional appearance was at Rice, Rock City? No, Rice University had a little um, show and it was actually in the lunchroom and there were just some people set up there doing, you know, 
I have a sculpture. Or I have this, you know, it was a little bitty something arty thing at, at Rice University. How did you hear about it? I don't know. It was something in the art going on in the art community in Houston. Uh -huh. So I went over there and got a table and all I had was my first trade and a bunch of those posters of Kachu breaking through the as strangers word. And not a single person talked to me the entire time. No. Yes. And I had a hundred of those posters I was going to give away for free. Nobody talked to me. I was so mad that I stayed there for an hour and a half, two hours. And then I walked out and I dumped all those posters in the trash can outside the lunch. Don't tell out. us that. <laughs> That's why we don't have any of those posters. Oh. So, yeah, I started off, you know, with nothing. So after that, after that wonderful experience, I thought, yeah, I'm ready for San Diego. <laughs> <laughs> and he got his trade and decided he had heard about San Diego and he decided he'd go. But he decided, like everything else he does at the last minute. Mm -hmm. and it's next week. I got to go. Yeah. So, of course, you know, you can't get a hotel room. You can't get a flight or anything. And this was, you know, 25 years ago. And we got a flight. He found a hotel room that was miles and miles away. You had to take a cab in every day. I don't even think they did the... I was on the north side of town. The buses or anything at that point. Um, and he took a box of books and a box of T-shirts and sat in uh, on a half a table with somebody. I shared a table with a guy who was doing gay porn, you know, as in real dildo porn. And um, I... One of the things I did to promote myself at that show was that you get a free sketch. If you will buy the t-shirt and wear it, I'll give you a free sketch. So um, halfway through the first day, there were 50 people walking around with this t-shirt on and people were saying, what is that t-shirt? What is that? Where'd you get that? And it was the Francine with the eyes, you know, so it's very provocative what's going on. Um, and that gonzo advertising worked. And that afternoon, people, pros were coming over. I remember selling to um, Peter David and Chris Claremont. And when Chris Claremont um, bought a copy of the first trade, I said, thank you so much. And he said, no, thank you. And I thought, wow, that is so cool. So because those guys were so nice to me, um, I, I learned, you know, this is not a business of jerks. This, these guys are here because they want to be. And they respect the fans and all that. Um, there are, I guess you can find some bad apples, but the great thing about the comic show that I told Robin the very first night when I called back all excited about my first day at Comic-Con. And I said, it has such a positive vibe. Everybody's here because they want to be. Um, so everybody is so uppy, you know. It'll be really interesting when we go back to shows, when things kind of all open up again and we still and we can go and there are, you know, thousands of people together, if the vibe will have changed all, will people mm -hmm. be so hungry to be back in that environment that they'll just be, you know, uh, glittery? You know what I mean? It, it's going to be really interesting to see how things go. How, you know, I'm a, I've, if you've met me, there's a 50 50 chance. If you said anything nice to me, I'd probably give you a hug. <laughs> I'm a hugger. And how am I going to go back to a show? And see people, you know, saying, oh, so glad to see you. And, and or even just shake hands. I mean, you're Just not, shake hands. Yeah. I mean. Uh, it'll, it'll take some time, I think. But I think people will be so happy to be um, back, you know, doing something they're passionate about that people would just be kind of floating. Yeah. So it'll be, uh, it'll be interesting to see how that all works out. I, I get carried away, though. I mean, I hug people who don't hug. You know, Adam Hughes does not hug. <laughs> but I hugged me. him anyway. I got in there and I hugged him. He hugs me. He, well, it did, everybody wants to hug you. <laughs> Will Eisner's girlfriend over here. Um, okay, I'm going to get a copy of this thing so we can show what we're talking about when the time comes. Oh, okay. It's right there. The copy's right there. Okay. Okay. So, so we're five minutes out. Go. Keep them busy. Go. <laughs> oh, gosh. So yeah, who's ready to go to, who's doing a convention this year? I know um, Emerald City and uh, C2E2 and New York Comic Con are slated to, to come in October and December, I think. Anybody planning on going? How do you feel about all that? Nothing, nobody's going. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Okay. Hey, 
Hey, this guy says we had one in Boise yesterday. How did that go? Yeah, you were mentioning that yesterday, and I was very surprised. I hope it went well. Um, oh, awesome con in D.C. in August. I'm cautious. Yeah, Jeremiah, I would be too. Yeah, I August seems a little early. Oh, and Tony says only if you go. You're sweet, Tony. Jennifer says Dragon Con is on. Well, a lot of that is outside, though, I think. Yeah. Oh, Dragon Con is outside? Isn't some of it outside? They do that big parade. In Atlanta? Well, yeah, there is a lot of stuff going on some, but they take over all that whole city block of buildings and hotels. So we are probably not going to do any shows this year. Nothing in Canada. So Canada's still holding out. But yeah, I'm not sure we'll do anything this year. Right. Those big crowds. Mm -mm. It's the big crowds and the plane flights. And we're vaccinated. But let's see how things play out before mm. we commit. Yeah. If, I don't know. It's easy for me to get antisocial because, which is so weird. I just said I'm a hugger, but I'm also antisocial. I, I'm happy to be here in the studio. But if I go to a con and I'm with happy people who we all have something in common, you're my best friend. But, you know, if we're just out in the middle of a metal concert out in the field and there's 3,000 people, yeah. Well, we'll see how it all goes. Yeah. I'll be I'll be interested. Too scary. I'm with you, Andy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hi, Andy, by the way. Um, have you guys read Owly? You need to read Owly. It's the sweetest book. Owl E. I said Owly. I know. I, it's, my owl. it's my accent. <laughs> it's a little owl that doesn't talk. Uh, yes, and it's so um And Andy Runton does it. All ages, um, wonderful. Um and there's no words. So it's a wonderful book to, to show with any age and watch the story unfold. Very sweet. Very sweet. Okay. We're down to three minutes. Shall we? Okay. Yes. Okay. Trivia question. And this is so you can win the sketchbook. Okay. Okay. Da, 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 da. So how are we gonna, okay. How are we going to do this? Because if you do the first answer, it may depend on browsers. Well, we just have to do it. What comes up on ours. So everybody just, just hold on. Okay. We'll say who the first one is, and 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 that's the person that'll get it. That's the only way. We're gonna watch the the chat feed, and the first one that appears on the chat feed is the one that gets it. So get your fingers ready. And then just email me at uh, mail at abstractstudiocomics.com if we say you're the winner, and we'll get it out to you. Okay. You ready, guys? Okay. The question is. Think strangers in paradise. The Fran question is Francine's what is Francine's superhero name in Jim Lee's dream sequence that he did for Strangers in Paradise? What is Francine's superhero name? We're watching. <laughs> Where's the limoncello? I'm with you, Audrey. <laughs> I grabbed the wrong book. <laughs> and was it in color? Uh huh. It was in color. This was at the beginning of um, of volume three, correct? Mm hmm. I'm looking to see if uh, it's on this page. I can show you this page. Don't remember. Nobody knows. This is a hard one. Yes, Lady Supreme. Is. No. Don't. I'm just. It's not on you. Oh. James Bella, you're the winner. Hey, you got it. Yes. <laughs> it's the Purple Phantasm. That was Francine's name that Jim Lee gave her. In this issue, Jim Lee drew the first few pages in his style, of course. And it's Francine as the Purple Phantasm. And then Kachu is kind of like a Punisher character. And they meet each other, and it really throws off the purple phantasm who instantly falls in love. <laughs> so, yeah, nicely done, James. You had to reach way back for that. <laughs> oh, he says he owns that Jim Lee page. No oh, wonder he no didn't wonder. Answer. <laughs> okay, that's all right. It's fair. If yes, you, it is. If you paid a million dollars for that page, you get to have that answer. <laughs> That's great. Well, you guys, thank you so much for joining us for the whole weekend. It was so fun to visit with everybody. And um, these sketches are going up. The sketches, yep. And uh, we'll see you back here October 1st, 2nd, and 3rd with 100 sketches. Yes, these are all.
<laughs> okay. Thanks, guys. Thanks it's so much. Fun. Thanks for supporting us. We really appreciate it. And we hope to see you all soon. Bye.